Hey guys, it's Austin. I'm going to do another video here on like the Ozarks bass fishing. This is going to be geared towards the post spawn. It's a big transitional period. I'm going to go over some things that I like to look for to help follow the fish back out towards deeper water and then some other things that are going to be happening to help key in on some uh, different bites and hopefully help you put more fish in the boat. So as far as the post spawn goes, you need to remember that this is a large transitional period. You're going to have fish that are still moving up to spawn. You're going to have fish that are spawning and then the fish that are post spawn. So you need to remember that the majority of the fish work their way from main lake areas during the winter. They followed creek channels, channel banks, stopped at secondary points, and then pushed their way up into the shallow areas to spawn. And they're basically going to do the same thing in reverse. So on your way out, you're going to be looking at a lot of the same areas that were good for the pre-spawn back out to the deeper water. Now you need to remember that not all the fish are going to make this big transitional Period. Some fish are going to have everything they need, so they're going to stay shallow. And there's also something else that you cannot forget about during the post-spawn period, and that is the shad spawn and the bluegill spawn. These are two important things that you can capitalize on and catch a lot of fish doing it. But I'll use this area here as an example for the shad spawn. So first, let's focus on the shad themselves. So Lake the Ozarks is primarily made up of gizzard shad. There are probably threadfin shad in here that can survive some of the winters. A lot of them are going to die off when the water gets below 45 degrees, but that doesn't mean that you're going to eradicate all of them. So there's probably some in here, but we're going to focus mostly on the gizzard chad. So if you're talking to a biologist or you look it up, um, they are primarily spawning when the water is around 65 to 68, 70 degrees. So that's the range you're going to be looking for the shad spawn to start kicking off here at Lake the Ozarks. Shad spend most of their time out in open water in what is called the pelagic zone. So what that is, is basically an area of open water that receives enough light penetration in order for phytoplankton to grow. That is their food source. Just say a lot of times during the day, you know, they're going to be kind of out in the guts, uh, a little bit closer to deeper water, things like that. But as the water temperature rises and it's time to spawn, they're going to slide their way into the backs of these creeks, shallower areas, and they're going to drop their eggs. So they are primarily basically dropping their eggs on hard surfaces, or areas with moss. That could be uh, the floats of docks, they could be laydowns, stumps, rocks, things like that. They basically just go through, drop all their eggs, and then they uh, land on the bottom and then they will hatch into little shad. And that's basically it. So they say gizzard shad usually only spawn one time, maybe two times, I guess, if conditions are right, they say, whereas a threadfin shad can kind of spawn multiple times throughout the year. But like I said, I'm mostly focusing just on the gizzard chat. You have to think of the bass, you know, say they're spawning on this little point or they're spawning over here and then they're starting to slide out. Say there's um, a brush pile on this creek bed or they're on this channel bank or something hanging out, starting to eat up as they're slowly progressing their way back out towards the main lake. And then the shad come in to spawn. So basically they're going to come in at low light hours so in the evening through the night and then early morning as the sun starts to come up they're going to leave so you can have all these areas in here that can be flooded with shad coming in to spawn and the bass are just going to hang out at any available piece of cover and they're going to start taking them out it's a free easy meal they get pushed up on the shore it's too easy they can't pass it up the top water becomes a really big deal early morning and this time of the year you can pretty much take your pick if you throw a buzz bait a spook a popper um, you throw wake baits, whatever you want. You can even throw jerk baits right up on shore and start working them erratically and catch fish like that. But that's something you got to keep in mind. Uh, that is definitely going to drive the fish to kind of stick around a little bit. One other thing, a quick indicator of what's going on is if you're ever out really early in the morning and you're up in these shallow areas like this and you see a bunch of uh, like flickering on top of the water, that's indication of a shad spawn that they're right up on the bank. Pretty much just get your top water out or a swim bait or something like that and start throwing it and you're pretty much going to catch fish. And like I said, as soon as the sun starts coming up, those fish start pushing out. So it usually doesn't last all that long, but it can be really good fishing for the time being. All right, since I'm on the subject of other fish spawning, I will go over the bluegill spawn really fast. So you're basically looking for the same areas as a bass spawn, shallow, flat, harder bottoms, things like that. Uh, around 65 to 70 degrees is when they start spawning. People a lot of times say around 70 is when it really seems to kick up for the bluegill. Um, same concept, you're gonna have the males pushing up, making the beds first. So when you start seeing that, um, you know you know that they are moving up and the females are gonna show up, lay eggs, then they're gonna leave. 
males are going to guard the eggs and then fry and then they're going to leave. So if you ever are idling in areas like this, these flatter uh, pockets and things like that, and you're side imaging and you see uh, looks like dimples on a golf ball, that is a bluegill bedding area. They, all, they cluster up and make beds. Sometimes it might be like 50 or more beds in like one kind of small area. So if you ever find something like that, keep note of that, and then you can come back the next year and um, either catch a bunch of bluegill if you want to do that, or you can use this to help try and catch bass as they're going to come in and eat the bluegill or try and eat some of the fry. So don't forget about um, the bluegill spawn, and they can actually spawn multiple times through the year, usually in like a month interval or so. And there's you know been people that have run that pattern and um, caught really big fish doing that a little bit later on through the summer. But that's always something to keep in your back pocket and do not forget about. All right, so we'll just start talking about uh, the actual transition now. So remember, we'll use this as a, an example. Say all these areas are potential spawn pockets for the bass. And after the post spawn, they're going to slowly kind of work their way out back to main lake um, areas or deeper secondary point areas and kind of set up there for the summertime. So like I talked about earlier, you're basically looking for the exact same things that you were looking for on the way in during the pre-spawn period, just go in reverse. So here I'm looking at some of these secondary points coming out. This one catches my eye. It's a kind of isolated dock on the secondary point, probably brush piles on there. Uh, working your way out, you've got pretty steep banks all the way through this whole cove. So I would pretty much just start fishing secondary points or start fishing down some of the steeper banks and see if you start getting bites. Uh, this one looks pretty steep. It's got a little bit of a flat spot up here. So go through there looking for your rock transitions and things like that and just slowly start working your way out towards the main lake as the water gets warmer and they're going to get set up for their summer bite. All right, I'll pick a new spot here just on the lake, kind of go over something and then we'll go into the glaze. So looking here, you have basically some spawn areas and then creek beds that go each direction. So first thing I'm looking for post spawn is uh, brush piles and stuff, especially in the glaze without many docks and coves like this. Isolated brush pile in this creek channel or off this little secondary point or something. First spot I'm gonna be looking for. After that, looking for rock transitions on these steeper banks and follow my way out a little bit to the main lake areas. So as the water gets warmer and get a little bit closer, usually around like the 1st of June, the end of May, kind of depends each year, but um, you can start to focus more on main lake type stuff, especially if they are running a lot of current. Um, and that includes uh, crankbaits, jigs, shaky headworms. I'll do another video on uh, the actual main lake type bite when it gets a little bit closer. But you can't forget about that, and you can sometimes go out there and, and start checking those areas. And you might be surprised what's out there because, like I said, big transitional period, you're going to have fish that are still spawning or just coming out of post-spawn. You're going to have, like, the first wave of fish that did spawn. They're going to kind of start working their way back out. Can't forget about that. We'll go to another area. Oh, let's just go in Lynn Creek. So another good area with nice creek bed, shallow back up in here. Um... This has a lot more docks. Can't forget about your docks. That's primarily what's on Lake the Ozarks, especially in other parts. They're literally everywhere. And you're basically looking for brush piles in the docks or rock transitions behind it, working your way back out. This is a nice uh, channel bank that swings up nice and steep. Check that out on your way out. And basically just start uh, hopping around, moving water until you figure out you know exactly where they're at. If you're catching them in the halfway portion of these uh coves in here then you know hop on over to the next cove and maybe start halfway and work your way out or work your way back in towards the shallow until you figure out what's working better if you're catching more towards the backs then halfway and back if you're catching them more towards the main lake then halfway and back out so basically make it simple on yourself don't overcomplicate it and just cover as much water as you can because in these big big transitions uh, that's basically the best thing you can do uh, one more, just quick example, we'll go into the Niangua. Let's pick this area, another another creek channel right up the gut. So plenty of spawn areas with these docks around here. Uh, look at this little secondary point here maybe. Doesn't look too bad, depends what the rock looks like on it. And uh, just start hopping your way out. See what, see what you get. Uh, there's a lot of different baits and techniques you can fish this time of the year. But like I said, do not forget about uh, the shad spawn. And then the bluegill spawn as the water starts getting a little bit warmer. Um, those could be some, some good things, especially the shad spawn early in the morning. It can be great top water if you like to do that. And then the bluegill spawn, um, just more 
imitation type baits, swim jigs, uh, brush hogs with the little chartreuse on the tail. So I'll go over the baits here in a minute, but again, just want to reiterate, it's a big transitional period. And basically if you were fishing um, throughout the winter and then into pre-spawn, just remember the areas you fished and the areas that you caught them on your transition banks and secondary points and things like that, and just work backwards. They're gonna, they're gonna be in there somewhere, working their way back out slowly and you can find them and you can catch a lot of fish. All right guys, so now I'll show you some of the baits I like to use during the post spawn period. So I'll start off with uh, some jigs. So this is just like an Omega jig, uh, watermelon red color. Um, I throw those, I throw some crocodile gator jigs, but I mostly just throw my own jigs that I tie. This is just a green pumpkin brown jig. And I would pair this with like a rage tail craw, or um, you could start getting away with some of the beaver style bait trailers. Basically whatever your favorite jig trailer is, is what I'm going to use. And this is going to be a time of the year where you can throw them on the bottom and still drag them, drag them around and catch fish. Or uh, when the water gets a little bit warmer, a little bit closer to that 70 degree mark, and you think that the uh, bluegill are going to get ready to start spawning, uh, I oftentimes like to take the tails of whatever I'm throwing and dye them chartreuse. And then you can cast them around the docks and stuff like that, areas where the bluegill are spawning or getting ready to spawn and just start burning them really fast with the uh, with your jig, just swim it. And you oftentimes catch a lot of fish doing that. You might surprise yourself if you haven't tried that before. Uh, next thing I'll start out with is uh, basically a zoom brush hog. And this is a, a great imitation type bait for a bluegill as well. Same thing, you dye the uh, tails on this thing, chartreuse, flipped around dock corners, things like that. Catch the bass coming off their beds as they're stopping on the docks, kind of feeding up. Um, and also just a great bluegill imitation. Super versatile bait, throw in brush piles around the docks, flip it, do whatever you want in the shady parts of, of the uh, docks. Uh, another thing I did talk about is top water. So you get the shad spawn that's getting ready to come up and even if there is no shad spawn at the time where you're not directly pushing the shad spawn itself, top water is still gonna really start to become a pattern as the water is, is you know warm enough now at that ring. So I like to throw a uh, buzz bait. This is a crocodile classic black and gold. That's really good. This is uh, one of my other favorite buzz baits is actually just uh, an old Strike King buzz bait. Um, it's, it's kind of quieter and it seems to be like a little more of a finesse approach, but I've caught a lot of fish with it. And something that I really like about it is uh, if you notice how far back the hook is in the head of this in relation to where the blade is, um, you basically never miss a fish on this buzz bait. If it strikes at it, you are getting it hooked up. So that's something I really, really like about that buzz bait. Um, you also have your poppers and spooks. So this is just two examples of some poppers I would throw this time of the year. Uh, one's a little bit smaller, just bone colored. And then one is a little bit bigger, but not too big. Uh, just a shad color, I think like a sexy summer shad or something like that. It's a Strike King popper. But Insert your favorite popper, topwater type bait if you want to throw a spook to and um, any other type of color, white, uh, baby bass type color, shad color, anything like that will work. You'll catch fish on it, pretty much guarantee it. Um, now you can still throw spinner bait coming out of this period. They're still gonna, it's still gonna catch fish, it's gonna perform. But I feel like as the water starts to get warmer, for me the spinner bait bite really starts to drop off. So. Maybe if you're a hardcore spinnerbait type person or you're fishing a lot shallower water, um, fishing for the fish that are kind of hanging around and going to stay shallow, real murky, muddy water, bouncing it off cover, that's a good option for you. Same with a uh, square bill. If you're fishing in real shallow water, looking for laydowns and things like that, be bumping your square, but square bill into whatever you can find and you'll catch fish doing that. Um, another thing starts to become a little bit of a player. Uh, is the old shaky head and I will start to upsize it. So normally through the pre-spawn period, um, I'm generally throwing the smaller size shaky head worm, but uh, as you start getting to the post-spawn period, uh, you're looking for bigger bites, looking for the fish that are starting to feed up again, the water's a little bit warmer, I'm gonna go for the Magnum trick worm. So this is a, a staple like the Ozarks, I feel like Tons of people are throwing it. You can throw, this is a Zoom Magnum trick worm. You can throw a Strike King bull worm. Uh, this green pumpkin, you can throw one that's black and blue. Another thing, I still like to dye the tail chartreuse a lot of the times. I feel like that, that helps get some extra bites, especially if the water's a little bit muddier and you want a little extra pop to your bait. Help find it, that's good. Um, and then 
I'll briefly talk about kind of more of the offshore bite when you start getting closer to the main lake or the or deeper secondary points. So I'll have a whole nother video on this when it gets a little bit closer, uh, a little bit warmer water. Normally it's around like the beginning of June, early June is when that bite really, really is in full swing. So I'll kind of have another video at then, but uh, start transferring over to a football jig and I will start using baits with bigger profiles. So this is a full um, Rage Craw trailer on here. And normally I buy the Rage Craws and you can trim them in the midsection with a pair of scissors and you can make them a normal uh, Rage Tail like jig trailer is how they sell it. You know, it's a more compact version. A lot of times in the summer, I will keep the whole thing on there and throw it just for a bigger profile. I can also put a brush hog on a jig, whatever, just to get a little bit bigger size. And uh, same thing with the claws. I oftentimes end up painting those a little bit chartreuse, give them a little extra color. And this is just a, um, a jig I tie. It's a Ozark special color, so it's brown and you put some green tinsel in there. Uh, I think it actually might be like a Bill Davenport special. He's a He's an older guy that's been at the lake for a long time and I probably is the jig master from what I've heard. And uh, I think that's a color that he really maybe started or likes to use a lot. I think Chompers maybe is the company that started um, with that jig color. So I catch a lot of fish on that color. Another thing, um, like I said, I'll have a whole other video on all this when it gets a little bit closer. But um, if you're gonna be out on those main lake points or things like that, don't be afraid to start picking up your big uh, 6XDs, 10XD, whatever type of crankbait you want to throw, whatever brand you like to throw, Six Cents, whatever. These are just some variations of colors I would throw. Uh, you got black and chartreuse, that's a classic. You got a little bit muddier water. Uh, this is a good old sexy shad color. Uh, these have rattles in them. This is an old Norman uh, DD22, I think. It's like a blue truce type color. Real bright and vibrant. And something you want to try is, um, if you're fishing, you're not getting a lot of bites or something like that, or you're, they're kind of slapping at it. If you get some of those without rattles in it, sometimes that can help. It almost sneaks up on them a little bit more and they can't hear the rattle as much. And then it's just boom. It's like an instant uh, reaction bite instead of them kind of knowing it's there. Or if you get a ton of pressure, people start throwing them a lot and it kind of starts to die off a little bit. Try a silent version or try a different brand maybe that people aren't throwing as much. And sometimes I think that can help give you a few more bites. So in, my, in the next video, when I start talking about more of this, I'll get more into the current when they're generating the dam and how that has more of an effect uh, on the main light type stuff. But hopefully this helps you basically get started on your post-spawn fishing. I think right now, uh, when I upload this, probably the spawn is, is getting ready to be in full swing. So uh, just remember, you're gonna have kind of waves of fish moving up. You're gonna have also fish moving out and start in the post-spawn period. So you can just kind of follow them back out towards the main lake as uh, the month goes on, the time goes on here, and hopefully stay on the fish and, and catch a lot of fish. So hopefully this video helps and so stay tuned for some more and thanks for watching.